Hi everyone, and this is going to be a vinyl finds of all kinds, but there's not just records in here. I'm also going to show some CDs. I don't think I have any cassettes to show you. Okay, uh, this is interesting because I picked this up for a dollar. It was in a dollar cheap bin. That's where all scratched, uh, poor condition records are in my record store. It's the classic album, Physical Graffiti, Physical Graffiti by Led Zeppelin. It's a double LP set. Now, some of you may remember a video I did a while ago that's now taken down where I kind of tore into this album. I played it for the first time in its entirety, and I just didn't like it. I didn't like it uh, as, as a whole entity, although there are two songs on here that I really love, and those two songs are Houses of the Holy and also the song Cashmere, which I think is fantastic. And I looked to check, and for a dollar... The side that had those two songs on it, thankfully, thankfully they're both on the same side, so I can just play that one side straight through and don't have to play the other three sides. Uh, again, I played it all before, I didn't like it. But anyway, uh, that the side with Cashmere and Houses of the Holy is really uh, in great shape. So for a dollar, I got the two songs I wanted, so I picked it up. That's something I don't usually do. You know, I don't usually buy lower tier beat up records unless that's the only way to get a rare album. That, and of course, physical physical graffiti is not a rare album. So, okay, this is speaking of rare albums. This is it's a pressing that's very rare. It's the Rolling Stones Hot Rocks collection, and we're here. We have an alternate Hot Rocks LP that was withdrawn. Uh, it says entirely different versions of Brown Sugar and Wild Horses, and when I I didn't ever know this existed. You know, I didn't know it existed, and uh, my store owner bought this out of somebody's collection, and then when he bought it. He said, let me show you what's different about it. He played the two songs. I love the, the variation of the two songs. And I said, I got to have this. So uh, I, I uh, ponied up the money and uh, we made a deal and I got this. I don't know why. I just had to have it. I, I realized that since then, these two songs are probably uh, available legitimately. Maybe they run collections or bonus tracks on the CDs and things. I understand, but just to have this actual pressing, which as far as I understand, was only around for a month or so before it was withdrawn. I thought that's pretty interesting. Now, uh, the rest of the vinyl LPs I have here mm, uh, are not really great shakes. I'm going to go over just for a minute to a CD that I got here. It's a CD set, really. Elvis Presley, okay, so finally, some of my Elvis fans can see a new Elvis item. It's the Girl Happy movie soundtrack. One of his better uh, 60s, fun in the sun kind of movies, I thought. Uh, I like the songs on here, too, most of them anyway. And it's got, you know, the songs from the film on it. But also, in addition to the songs from the film, you've got, uh, you know, outtakes, alternate versions. That's why I like this. Uh, and I believe, is this the FTD label? Da -da. I don't know. There's so many Elvis uh, rarities I want to get on the FTD vinyl series, but uh, they cost a fortune. So I don't know when I'm going to get around to them, but uh, nice to have this. So now we took care of Led Zeppelin, the Rolling Stones, Elvis Presley. We're going to go from that into Connie Francis. Here's a Connie Francis two-record set that I found, solid gold. I'm still building into my Connie Francis collection, and there's another edition. It's been a while since I picked up an album of Connie's. I also found this by Brenda Lee, Emotions. I like some of Brenda Lee's stuff, particularly the earlier material, where it's a little bit more, dare I say, rock and roll-ish. Um... I picked up this album that I, I had before, but I, I, I can't find it. Let's put it that way. I don't know if I sold it. Nat King Cole, Ramblin' Rose. And the an interesting thing about Ramblin' Rose, when I was an infant, you know, I guess when I was first born, and uh, I used to go over to my grandparents' house. Boy, that train is right on time. Boy, that'd make a great outtake. I'm not cutting it out. Screw you. Now back to being a harmless infant. When I was an infant... My grandfather used to dance around the room holding me, and he'd play this song, Ramblin' Rose. And he, you know, or as a young baby, you know, a small baby. I see, I still have, I wonder if you can remember things that young, because I seem to remember that song. And every time I hear Ramblin' Rose, I, I get 
kind of those warm feelings. So that's a memory of that. Now we're going to go to Fleetwood Mac, a complete blind buy in the shrink behind the mask. You know, I'll have to listen to this album and see if it was worth a purchase. You may be surprised to hear me say this again, or maybe not so surprised, but lately I'm on another one of my culling trips, where, um, when I say trips, I mean uh, state of mind that I'm in, where I'm thinking of culling the collection. Uh, I told you I was kind of done with jazz records uh, and early big band records, and I am, but I don't know if I ever showed this yet. This, is pretty, this has been here a while, for months, and uh, this is uh, the Bluebird, uh, it's a demonstration record, not for sale, Glenn Miller, Volume 3. It's sealed, and also, this is Glenn Miller, Volume 5, still sealed. So I got uh, a nice collection of some Glenn Miller, in addition to some other Glenn Miller that I like. Yeah, I was uh, alluding to uh, culling the record collection a while back. I get these half ideas that I come up with, and I forget to finish my thought. Well, as it turns out, yeah, I've been culling the collection again, believe it or not. Uh, I'm sure you believe it, because I go up and down all the time, and... Uh, I'm again trying to be careful with purchasing, you know, non beetle stuff, really. Uh, I, I, you know, but yet I still find myself buying. I'm not, you know, I'm not exclusively collecting only Beatles, but uh, that's my main collection. So, okay, now I'm going to go for some 45s. I've always loved this song. It's Jackie Blue. By the Ozark Mountain Daredevils. The reason that I picked this up is because it was a picture sleeve. You know, um, I like this side better than the other side, I guess. You know, Better Days is the B side. I mean, when I hear Jackie Blue, the last thing I think of is an old lady with one foot in the grave. But uh, apparently that's the image that now is forever associated with a 70s song that I really love. One of my all-time favorites, no question, Jackie Blue. This is an upgrade of a picture sleeve. Uh, Connie Francis singing Where the Boys Are from the movie of the same name. Uh, the, the copy that I already have of this probably was good enough, but this was really cheap and super clean. So I went ahead and uh, picked it up just in case. Um, uh, I have some CDs left and a couple of 45s here. I picked up this 45, The Outside is Doing Time Won't Let Me, and this is what I, what I mean now, uh, if I could just interject this for a minute. I like this song a lot, so I bought the 45. Now, what I'm trying to do is stop myself buying whole LPs of something like this. Like, if I saw The Outsider's album that had this song on it, I would, and it was a nice cover and everything, I would buy and say, oh, I want the whole album, have the whole package, but will I really listen to the whole album? Now, these are, these are, questions that concern us collectors every day. We all have record albums that have one song we like on it, maybe two. Is it worth having? I mean, I just showed you Led Zeppelin's Physical Graffiti, which is a four-side set, two records. And we like two songs on I'm going to hold on to that thing just basically for two songs. But there will be exceptions. We have to decide for ourselves what the exceptions are going to be and, you know, why, why we would uh, buy one record by an artist but not another. And kind of break our own rules or bend our own rules. Uh, this is a, a record by John Zachary, who just died not too long ago. Dinner with Drac, uh, part one, and Dinner with Drac, part two, on the Cameo label. Um, I, I have this 45 already, but you know, I found this one so clean. I don't mind replacing clean records when I find them that way. You know, upgrading them a little bit. Okay, a couple of CDs here. This is uh, something I'll talk about. I, I mentioned my friend who died, my friend Mike. I remember we went to Tower Records. I think it was in 19... Let me look at the year. It must have been 1994, because that's the date of this. And we always dreamed of something like this. We loved The Little Rascals. And we found this CD. Uh, we both bought a copy of it. The Bo Hunks. Recreating the Little Rascals classic music. And also, not just the Little Rascals, but it's also Laurel and Hardy. It's put out by Koch. So from Laurel and Hardy and Little Rascals, short films that were out in the, you know, 30s mostly. Uh, 
That's what this was. Now, this, uh, this is not my original copy. I lost my CD on this. I mean, I lost the CD. I, I had the original in 1994. We, I bought it with Mike. We both, both had a copy. We spent a wonderful afternoon back at his house playing it and laughing our asses off because it was so well rendered. Such great versions of the Little Rascal songs that uh, it sounded like the real music right from the soundtrack. But I lost my copy. I don't know whatever happened to my CD. I, I searched everywhere. I, I took it for a ride one time and it's gone. But luckily, I found a used copy here at the record store, so I was able to replenish it. And of course, it's probably available online too, if it's not out of print. The last item I'm going to show here is a sealed copy of Back to Fleetwood Mac. It's Tango in the Night. Uh, it says $9.99, but it only cost me $4.99. Uh, it's not really used, because it's still sealed, but it's only $4.99. And I know I like a few songs off here right away. I like the song uh, Seven Wonders, Big Love, Everywhere, and uh, Little Lies. So this is an album I'll probably enjoy. I also have an LP of it, you know. I'm buying CDs again, you know. Uh, buying CDs are easy to play in the car. I tend to listen to so much more music in the car than I do here. And uh, I think that slaps the lid on things for today. Thanks, everybody, for watching. And... Take care.